Mohamed Salah is currently widely recognised as one of the world's best players. The Liverpool attacker is an integral part of Jurgen Klopp's side, scoring and assisting on a constant basis and helping break Liverpool's 30 year wait for the Premier League trophy. The Egyptian superstar is a household name now, but his journey on life to becoming a great footballer was not the easiest. In this video, I'll go through the obstacles and struggles Mohamed Salah had to overcome to achieve his dreams and become the best player in the world. As always, if you do enjoy this video, make sure to like, subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos in future. Now let's get straight into it. Mohamed Salah was born in 1992 in Basyoun in Egypt. He fell in love with football at the tender age of 7 watching the Champions League and visualising himself to be playing at the highest level one day. Growing up, his idols were the Brazilian Ronaldo, Zidane, Figo and Totti. He was drawn to players who had that flair and magic about them, the players who brought a sense of excitement every time they had the ball at their feet. Growing up, Salah would play for small local clubs in Egypt, but would get his breakthrough at the age of 14 when he would sign for a team called Arab Contractors or El Makawloon. As the club was in Cairo, it used to take young Salah four to four and a half hour journeys, five days a week to get to training. He recalls having to take three, four and sometimes five different buses to get to the football club. In fact, he would go to school from 7 to 9 a.m. only and then would be allowed to leave early to travel to long distance to training. He would then not return home until 10, 11 p.m. He would then repeat this cycle for three to four years, showing his dedication and determination to his craft and his desire to make it as a professional footballer. Initially, Salah would play for the youth team at Arab Contractors before joining up with the first team aged 16 and 17. Whilst playing for the youth team, he would often be deployed at fullback, but after seeing his passion and courage to get forward, his manager moved him to further up the field, playing him on the wings and up front. By the time he was 19, Salah was already making waves in Egypt. He would make his international debut for the Pharaohs against Sierra Leone and a short time later would score his first goal for his country against Niger. His international reputation would continue to grow and he was part of the Egypt squad which took part in the 2012 Olympics in London, whereby he would fire Egypt to the quarterfinals by scoring three times in the group stages before crashing out against Japan. His impressive performances for his country meant clubs in Europe started to take notice. Swiss club Basel would eventually take a chance on the Egyptian youngster. It was a difficult time for Salah as Egypt was his home and it was all that he knew. But Salah knew this was a step he had to make to pursue his footballing career and give himself the best chance to reach the top of the game. He eventually moved to Switzerland but struggled at first due to the lack of language and cultural differences. He didn't speak English or Swiss German, so even normal daily tasks like going to the supermarket to get food was difficult at first. What made it even more difficult was that he moved alone, a new country, culture, language, everything. As you can expect, loneliness and doubt would creep in. As there was only a few hours of training in football on a daily basis, it would mean Salah would have a lot of time by himself at home, which didn't help his loneliness. He would often wander the streets of Basel by himself, trying to get used to his new environment. He realised quickly that he had to adapt, otherwise he would continue to struggle, which led to a mindset change. He put his energy and focus into football, but also began to take English lessons to help adapt to his new country and to communicate better. One of the main reasons Mohamed Salah didn't mind joining Basel, rather than a club in the top 5 leagues, was due to Basel being involved in a major European competition such as the Champions League and the Europa League. He realised if given the opportunity, he could make a name for himself in these competitions. In the first season there, Basel would get knocked out in the qualifying round of the Champions League, which would mean they would not reach the group stages, but instead have to play in the Europa League. This was a blessing in disguise as Salah and Basel would do well and reach the semi-finals and get attention from the rest of Europe. Salah would start to attract interest due to his performances and the high number of assists he was providing his teammates. Salah speaks fondly about his time with Basel and still feels a very strong affection and connection to the club. Looking back on his time, Salah said, What I can say is Basel is a fantastic club, absolutely fantastic. I have a good relationship even now with the president of the club, the ex-president and everyone there. 
They are still my friends and I love them so much. He continues by saying, Basel is a huge step in my career so far, 100%. Without Basel, I wouldn't be the player I am now, 100%. He would end up winning the most valuable player award during his time at Basel, which is when Chelsea would come knocking. In 2014, English giants Chelsea and Jose Mourinho would come calling. They would pay Basel £11 million to make Salah the first ever Egyptian at the club. However, at Chelsea, Salah would find opportunities hard to come by and he would struggle to establish himself, meaning he was constantly on the bench. However, Salah believes everything happens for a reason and it was for Chelsea when he first experienced Anfield for the first time. The experience and aura would stay with Salah and he remembers thinking to himself, I have to come here one day and play. Who knows, if he hasn't signed for Chelsea and faced those difficult times, he might not have become the superstar he is today. From difficult times, strong characters are created and this is the case for Salah. As he struggled to assert himself at Chelsea, he was deemed to a plus two requirements and as a result was sent on loan to Italian side Fiorentina. And this was exactly the move he needed to reignite his passion for football. His impact on Italian football was instant, scoring 9 goals in 26 games including a mesmerising goal against Italian champion Juventus, showcasing his immense individual talent and ability. At Fiorentina, he would wear the number 74, which was homage and respect to the victims of the Port Said disaster, whereby 74 people lost their lives. After a short 4 months at Fiorentina, fellow Italian side Roma would sweep in and sign Salah permanently from Chelsea, much to the frustration of Fiorentina. It would cost Roma 13.5 million after an initial one year loan. Salah would score an impressive 29 goals and register 17 assists in his two years at the club, making him one of the deadliest and clinical attackers in world football. Salah pays homage to his manager at the time, Luciano Spalletti, for making him a more rounded footballer. Salah always had the attacking instincts, but he credits Spalletti for improving him, especially defensively. Salah recalls by saying, He helped me even as a person in improving my character. Defensively, he helped me too, 100%. He showed me the way to defend with the team and I saw myself improving in that aspect a lot. After two personally successful years with Roma, Liverpool would show interest in Salah. Undeterred by Salah's previous struggles with Chelsea, Liverpool would pay £34.3 million to sign the Egyptian to a five-year deal. Looking back at this, Roma have since admitted regret at letting Salah leave for such a small fee, considering Salah is now worth much more. Salah always wanted to return to England to prove people wrong, since many felt he couldn't replicate the form he had shown in Italy back in the Premier League. How wrong were his doubters? In his first season back in England, Salah would score an astonishing 32 goals in the league with 10 assists as well as a further 11 goals in the Champions League. Wow, what an impact! Every year since his arrival at Liverpool, Salah would continue to record impressive goalscoring numbers and constantly be one of the top goalscorers in the league. He helped Liverpool to break a 30-year curse and finally win the Premier League in 2020. He also helped Liverpool win the coveted Champions League trophy as well, beating Tottenham 2-0 in the final in the 2018-2019 season. At the time of this video, Salah's accolades include winning Africa Football of the Year twice, the Puskas Award once, Player of the Year four times in different leagues he has played in, top goalscorer three times, English League Champion twice, Champions League winner once, Swiss Champion twice, as well as a few more trophies. What an impressive resume. His consistent performances have meant Salah has also regularly been nominated for the Ballon d'Or award, the award given to the best player in the world. This award has been dominated by Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo for many years, but Salah is among a group of players who would feel they are next in line for this prestigious award. And who knows, if Salah could fire Liverpool to more silverware and keep scoring the goals, he might well get his hands on this ultimate personal prize. Outside of football, Salah is a very family oriented man and also a devout Muslim. He married his high school love, Maji Sadiq, in 2013 and they have two children together, Maka and Kayan. His wife is a biotechnologist who leads a very private life and is hardly ever in the spotlight or in the media. She no doubt plays an integral part behind the scenes to allow Salah to thrive and become the worldwide superstar he is today. An interesting fact which not many people know is that there was a bit of controversy in 2014 around Salah when he was called to do mandatory military service back in Egypt. 
However, high-level officials met up to waive this requirement from Salah as it was becoming the national treasure of the country. So, as we wrap up this video, I have a few questions for you. Is Mohamed Salah the best player in the world today? Will he ever win a Ballon d'Or? Where does he rank amongst the greatest players to ever play the game? Let me know by commenting below. As always, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos in future.